Hi, this is Katie. This is just gonna be a little like vlog update kind of video. Um, I did have something else planned for today, but wasn't able to do that. Um, and just wanna tell you guys what's been going on this week. Um, yes, my breathing is heavy and I will tell you why in chronological order. So that'll be like third basically of what's going on. So, okay, just a little update on my week. Hello, hi, how are you guys doing? So I didn't post a video this past Tuesday, which again, I had planned to post a video, um, but last weekend I got sick and it ended up being just one of these viruses that will not leave my body. Um, it has been like a week at this point and I have been like the extreme level of exhaustion where like taking a five minute shower means that I have to go lie down again because I feel that wiped out and that tired, you know? And I've had like a really mild fever, but really no other symptoms, um, but just, you know, a virus that's just been lasting for the past week, no big deal. I'm not in a ton of pain or anything. It's just that I've had to like rest a lot over the last week and my brain has been pretty tired too and so i'm like i really don't think that it would be a good idea to film a video it's especially not a good idea to like go out and try to walk around and film a video that would just not be a good idea so i did end up skipping tuesday's video because my brain has just been out of it and my body has been a level of exhausted that i have not been in a long time and you guys know i have chronic illness and i have other things going on that i do get exhausted a lot this past week has been a level of exhaustion that I have not had in a long time. So I've just been resting, watching movies. Honestly, why do most movies just, like, why are they not good? Honestly, it's a total tangent, but seriously, like I have looked on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, and I have only found like a couple movies that I actually liked. I saw Night and Day with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz from, I don't know, 15 years ago. That one was pretty good. Regardless, I've just been like lying around watching movies. I tried to read a little bit, but again, my brain is like pretty out of it. And so, uh, yeah, so today, now it's Friday and I'm probably posting this today. If I can edit, we'll see. I probably won't even be editing this very much, but um, yeah, I was very adamant this morning of like, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna shower, and I'm gonna put makeup on and I'm gonna try to film. So actually I was also adamant about that yesterday. So yesterday, Thursday, again, not feeling great, but not in pain or anything, um, more just, you know, exhausted and just really run down. But yesterday I was like, okay, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna, you know, put mascara on and I'm gonna try to film something. I'm gonna get out of the house, go for a drive. I'm gonna like do something because sometimes when I'm sick, and I just lie in bed for a week, it actually makes me feel worse. And sometimes if I actually like get up and get dressed and like go for a walk or something, sometimes it helps if I move my body, get some sun, you know? And so <clears throat> I was um, gonna do that yesterday and I still felt horrible, but I was like, just push yourself, see, you know, see if you can do it for 10 minutes, whatever. And so um, I, you know, showered and put mascara on and I, went to drive my car out of the driveway and I got to the road and I was like, there's a weird sound. Yep, I know. And you're like, Katie, you've had enough car trouble. I know. But I was like, there's a weird sound, but it's coming from like the back. Like it sounded like there was something like in the trunk or like under the car almost, but like in the back. And like, I looked in my trunk and I looked like underneath and I didn't see anything. And again, I was pretty out of it. So like, I only checked for like two seconds and then I went in the house and got my best friend who I'm staying with. And I was like, hey, can you like come check my car out for me? And I was like, I only hear the noise when I'm driving. So like, just get in the car, we'll just pull out of the driveway. And he went to get in my car. He's like, no, he's like, you have a flat. <laughs> and I'm like, of course I do. And obviously I don't even know how long I've had the flat because I haven't even driven my car all week because I've just been in bed. And um, so I had a flat and I was like, of course. And so this morning we borrowed a neighbor's uh, jack and my roommate and I changed the tire this morning just to my spare. So showered, put my makeup on and my stomach was growling. And like, I just haven't really had an appetite, honestly, the last week. Like food has tasted exactly the same, but it hasn't like been exciting. It hasn't really tasted very good. You know, like when you just have a virus and like you're just not as hungry, you know, but my stomach was growling. So I was like, okay, let me force some food down. 
and I um, made a sandwich with these new gluten-free wraps. And you might know where this story is going. Um, so I tried these new gluten-free wraps and had some turkey and stuff. And I don't remember why. Oh, because I was talking about the wraps to my roommate. And I was like, oh, I'm trying these new wraps. They're actually pretty good. They're made of like sweet potatoes and stuff. And he's like, oh, like what else is in them? And so I went and looked at the ingredients and I saw that they had tomato powder in them. And if you've been following along with me for the last year, year and a half, you'd know that I have a rare esophagus disease. And one of the things that triggers the inflammation is tomatoes. And so I have not eaten tomatoes at all in the last year. And I am allergic to so many things that anytime I buy something new, I check the ingredients and I look at them, I study them, I go back and forth to make sure there's no gluten, no dairy, no tomatoes, you know, and everything else that I'm allergic to. Um, so the fact that I bought these wraps and didn't double check boggles my mind. That is not something that happens to me. Um, I mean, every once in a while, but rarely, maybe like once a year, this happens to me that I like forget to check the ingredients or that I just assumed or that I thought I checked them or whatever, you know? So after I already ate almost a full wrap, I realized that there was tomato in it, which is one of my biggest allergens for my esophagus disease. When I first got this esophagus disease last year, I had to cut out a ton of food and then basically add them back one by one to see which ones triggered the inflammation and the difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, tightness, choking, you know, any of those kind of symptoms in my esophagus with my EOE. And I remember when I added back tomatoes, I did have difficulty breathing for like several hours and it's not anaphylactic. Um, I grew up with asthma, so like I kind of, can gauge um, like how serious it is if I have difficulty breathing, if I did need to go to a doctor or something, you know? Um, but yeah, last year when I tried tomatoes back, it was very, very difficult to breathe for several hours. And um, I also had like a horrible stomach ache. And then eventually went away, you know, maybe the next day I was still a little run down, but then by the next day I was okay, I think is how that went about a year ago. But I obviously have not had tomatoes since because it was a horrible experience. Right as I was almost done eating the wrap and right before I checked the ingredients, I was coughing a little bit more than normal because I cough almost every time I eat just because of my EOE, but I was coughing a little bit more than normal and I was even thinking like, oh, I wonder why, like I wonder what happened. I wasn't even thinking about the wrap. I'm gonna just say it's because I've had a low grade fever the last few days, but I don't know, I just wasn't thinking about it. I made a huge mistake. So yeah, and I checked the ingredients, so it has tomatoes. Yeah, so I think for the next few hours, I'm basically going to lie around. Um, I did take, I have an albuterol inhaler. I did take that just to see if it would help. It might not, I don't know. And uh, yeah, so this week was just a, you know, just a, a bunch of like little inconveniences, right? Because being sick, was again, not the worst thing in the world. I've just been extremely tired basically for the last week and exhausted and my body has been run down. It sucks, but it's not a huge deal. Getting a flat at the house, not a big deal. Annoying, not a big deal though. The tomato thing, not ideal. It's not ideal. A little out of it. My breathing is a little heavy, not horrible. It's not horrible, but regardless, I'm going to still rest, I guess, but one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is A, because I don't like skipping videos and I know I skip Tuesdays. The other reason I wanted to make this video is because one of the videos that I did want to make this week was talking about why I've been happier in Florida. Um, because I've gotten a few comments over the last, you know, couple months that I've been living in Florida, just saying that I've, you know, looked happier or um, just that I've looked good or something like that, you know, which is very sweet of you guys to say. I know that some people will probably assume that it's because of my circumstances. Maybe that I love Florida. Maybe I love the heat. Maybe I, you know, love where I'm living or, or things like that. Um, and I want to explain briefly that, yes, I do like living here and I really like living with my roommate and I love the house that I'm in and stuff. Um, but the reason that I seem happier, and I'm only putting happier in quotes because Sometimes people do compare happiness with um, circumstances, but the reason that I might seem a little bit, you know, lighter or brighter or more joyful or something is not because of my circumstances. 
It is 100% because of Jesus, 100%. Um, and so I kind of thought that even in this video, it would be good to talk about that for a minute because I have been the lowest of the lowest of the low, severe depression, like more severe than I've ever told you guys by a million. And I've struggled with that on and off for 18 years at this point, where sometimes it's manageable, sometimes it's horrifically low depression. And there was one time in my mid twenties where I was on a medication. I'm not on many meds now. They're not really for me, I don't think, um, but I know that they help some people. And I remember in my mid twenties, I was on a medication and after being on it for a few weeks, and I just like, you know, woke up and got out of bed and just was like functioning and felt like capable of functioning like a person. And at that point, I probably struggled with my mental health issues for, you know, five or six years. And I remember after being on those meds for a few weeks and waking up and just seeming like I could function was wild to me because basically every day for six years, even if my depression wasn't super, super low, I would still wake up barely feeling like I could function as a person. I still would, I'd go to work, I would get my stuff done, I would see my friends, you know, like I would go to church, I would do stuff. But being on that medicine for a few weeks and waking up and feeling functional, I was like, wait a minute, is this what everyone else feels like who isn't suffering with these types of mental disorders? Like, is this what they feel like? Like that they just kind of wake up and they can function throughout the day? And it just felt really nice to, you know, not wake up and be crying all the time or not wake up and be dreading the day, you know? You might be like, oh, well, you know, you just said you're not on meds, so why aren't you on those anymore if they helped you so much? Well, I was on them for maybe, I don't know, two months or something and they helped and it was a really nice two months. And then after two months, they started making me throw up. So I had to decrease the dose to where they didn't make me throw up anymore, but that dose didn't really helped me very much. So I did stay on them for a little bit, but I basically went right back to the severe depression that I was feeling before. So I just remembered those couple months that I felt lighter, I felt capable, I felt like I was functioning, like basically not everyone else, because I know a lot of people suffer, but like lots of other people that they might wake up and be like, oh, I don't wanna go to this meeting or whatever, you know, but generally they wake up and they just are functioning. And I just know for a long time I wasn't. And then the meds made me pretty hopeful. Um, and then they stopped working again. And it was just like a, it was just like I had something like dangling in front of me and then it got taken away basically. And then, you know, during that time I, you know, I went to church sometimes and I did believe in God, but I didn't get saved until about three years after that. And I remember when I got saved when I like know that I surrendered my life to Jesus. I felt a very similar but way better type of functioning capability, that joy, that like I wake up and I'm like, yes, like I can handle today. I want to, to experience today. I want to do everything I can today and that kind of joy, you know? And I felt it way more than I did on the meds, but it was a similar type of, of feeling. And I knew that that was only because of Jesus. It was like Jesus completely cured my mental illnesses at that point when I got saved. For those first few months that I was praying all the time, I was reading so many Christian books, I was reading my Bible all the time, I was going to church multiple times a week, I was so focused on Jesus and not focused on my own issues. And I felt that, that joy and I felt lighter and I felt okay and I felt like I was functioning. And I, I felt basically like how I, how I think I should have been feeling as a person. And then, like, I know a lot of Christians, uh, this happens too, and it's not great, but I know that this does happen, that, you know, even being a Christian, it does not mean that your circumstances are always going to be perfect. It just means that Jesus is always going to be there with you through them. That's what it means, you know? And so when we focus on Jesus through the circumstances versus just our, our circumstances, then we're going to have a specific type of joy because Jesus does not go up and down. Jesus does not change. The circumstances will, but if our joy comes through Jesus, who never changes, then our joy will stay pretty consistent. But anytime we start to lose Jesus a little bit and focus more on the circumstances, or this guy broke up with me, or I lost my job, or I'm broke, or anything, if we start to focus on that more, how I see it is that 
we're living a little bit more for the world. And so our emotions are going to get more tied to our circumstances. When again, I really do believe that if I'm focused on Jesus and I believe anyone can do this, if I'm focused on Jesus, then my emotions are not going up and down as much compared to my circumstances. So that's, you know, how I was when I got saved for that first while, but then there were just a lot of times over the last, you know, eight, nine years where I did go back to focusing on my issues, my circumstances, the bad parts of my life. And I focused on the negativity and my depression came back way worse and my anxiety came back way worse because I was focusing on myself and I was focusing on how can I fix myself, me, me, me. But in reality, it was I was still focusing on the negative and I was focusing on the world and I was focusing on my circumstances and what I can do. I was not as much focusing on Jesus and what he can do. And I know that I mentioned a couple months ago, I started to like really focus on Jesus again. And I've been going to church and I've been reading my Bible almost every single morning. And my my view of the world changed again and my view of what being alive is changed again. And I know for a fact that the reason that I've seemed happier or more joyful the last couple months that I've been in Florida has been because of Jesus. And again, like my circumstances the last couple months have been, well, some of them have been really good, but some have been the same that they have been the last, you know, couple of years in terms of, you know, money issues and job issues, relationship issues, they're all the same. My circumstances over the last few months have not changed a ton, but my mentality has changed, my focus has changed, and my focus is much more on Jesus. And so I feel lighter and I have more joy and that joy is not gonna go up and down as much if I'm focused on Jesus. But I even noticed like yesterday and the day before, especially because I've been sick. And I know for me sometimes, like when I'm sick and I just want to distract, sometimes I won't read my Bible as much or I won't pray as much, which I know might seem backwards. But so even the last couple of days that I've just been kind of like, oh, like who can I talk to? I just want to be distracted. And it's like, then I start to feel a little bit worse. And so I notice that even in a day to day thing, you know, but so I just know right now, like, Am I having a little difficulty breathing? Yes. Is it as bad as it was last year? No. Does that mean it's like not going to get that bad? I don't know. It's only been a half hour. I, I don't know if it's going to get worse, but right now this is manageable. Do I still feel sick from this past week in terms of like exhausted? Yeah. Um, do I have a, a spare tire on my car and I have my real tire in the front seat of my car um, that I have to bring to a mechanic at some point? Yeah. I just really see it as if we put our emotions based on our circumstances, then right now that I'm sick, I have to go back to the mechanic and I've been a million times. Um, I'm having money issues. Um, I accidentally ate tomatoes. I am single and I hate being single. I don't know the next steps of my life. You know, if we look at those circumstances, then we can find anything that will be an excuse for why we're miserable or why we're depressed or why we're mean to other people or anything like that. But again, when joy and consistency comes from Jesus, then it will not go up and down as much and it will not be as dependent on our circumstances. Might some of our circumstances make things a little bit more difficult or a little bit easier or a little bit more fun or a little bit scarier? Sure. But that's a difference between focus and just kind of like an after effect, you know, or like a side effect of something, you know? And so it's like right now, like, yeah, my circumstances right this second are not fantastic. I don't feel great. I don't know how it's coming across in the video because I've been doing video for so long. So sometimes even if I'm sick, I can present a little bit better on camera, but I don't actually know if I'm doing that right now. I have no clue because I'm very out of it. But my breathing is, is not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. But still, regardless, I just accidentally ate something that I'm allergic to. That sucks. And honestly, if this happened six months ago, I would have been beating myself up about it. I would have been so angry. But right now, I'm just kind of like, oh, it sucks, but all right, well, you know, I'm just going to lie down and watch a movie. And some people have that kind of mentality anyway. But specifically for me, with someone who has suffered with very severe mental illnesses for the past 18 years, I generally, if something bad happened, would immediately go to the anger or defeated or life sucks, you know. But when I have Jesus, my brain doesn't jump to that conclusion as quickly. When I focus on Jesus my brain focuses a little bit more on, you know, on the grateful and the positivity, sure, but just on what's real. Jesus is real. 
And Jesus, Jesus died for us to save us because we could never be good enough to go to heaven by ourselves. And so the fact that I can praise him, the fact that I can pray to, to God through him, and the fact that I know where I'm going after I die because of him, he's worth all my praise and he's also worth my focus. And I don't focus on him because it makes me feel better. That's not why I do it, but it's a pretty cool side effect to it, honestly. You know, I focus on him because he's real and because he's worth praising. But with that, I do feel lighter and I do feel more joyful. And so I just think that, you know, why I'm happier in Florida, I've just been more focused on Jesus lately. It's not even the main reason, it's the reason. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Jesus, please let me know in the comments um, or message me on Instagram. We can chat um, and I can give you some resources. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that story with you today. I'm going to go edit this, see if I can post it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and thank you for listening to my story. And I hope that you're subscribed. A lot of travel videos and stuff, but some personal videos like this as well. Um, but yeah, I guess that's going to be it. Thank you again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you. Jesus loves you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.